And so, Mark Epstein's class spent their spring break in Rwanda, flying from Houston to Rwanda's capital, Kigali, the students' relatively modern base of operations in the center of the most densely populated country in Africa, where, for most Rwandans, human power and burning charcoal are primary energy sources, where water is shared from a well, and where medical care is a day's journey away. Epstein's four teams had little more than a week to meet with Rwandan health officials, visit hospitals and remote clinics, and determine a market for their biotech products. We followed the incubator team. We divided into two, two groups. One that we'd be taking kind of a top-down approach, trying to assess the market need, trying to understand what the, the people and the hospitals and everybody needed and wanted out of our products. And then we also had the bottom-up approach where we were going to focus on the logistics and the operations, you know, how can we get these materials that we need for these incubators, these, these Billy Rubin lights, uh, how could we get those built and, you know, could we effectively, you know, get these to meet in the middle somehow. I had a job to do. I was on the, you know, sourcing and operations team and so I had to figure out a way to communicate to this guy that we wanted an incubator built and I mean honestly like I look at it on the video now and I mean it, it's almost foreign to me because when I was in it it was just like how am I going to get this done what tools do I have you know I mean I've got a tape measure I've got a notebook and I've got a little model and I somehow need to be able to communicate to these guys that it's got to be you know, this big, by this wide, have these shelves, a plexiglass roof. I mean, it, it was, I mean, it was really no big deal. So, I mean, basically, at the end of this, we might turn this all over to him. He can make these and sell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not trying to make any money off of it. Yeah, yeah. We'll let him make all the money, but we need at least, we'll buy one to yeah. show to hospitals. Oh, oh, okay. And so... In the beginning, it would be better be to get enough incubators. We don't have enough incubators. So, we have a an incubator product that's designed out of local materials, completely built, will be built here. Uh, it's been in use in Malawi for several years now. Uh, it's a design that they came up with. And, I mean, if we were able to provide an incubator for, say, I don't know, $200, you know, it was able to hold the baby at, you know, 98.6 degrees, you would be interested? I'm sure that I'd be interested in it because it's low cost and uh, like Malawi, it, it works. Mm -hmm. It works in Malawi, why don't in Rwanda? And the center is around two, three thousand yeah. low cost to one which is coming with India and you have problem with it when there's the problem of maintenance. Yeah. Well, these materials made all here. I mean, you can get the light bulbs to change. It's made out of you know, plywood and plexiglass. I mean, very easy to fix, very easy, low, low cost to maintain. I mean, so if you're able to get one for $200, $300, you'd be very interested. Yeah, yeah we'd be very interested. Not, not only this hospital, but I think all hospitals in Rwanda. As part of their research, the MBA teams visited remote clinics throughout Rwanda. The incubator team visited Nyagasambu, where AIDS victims and expectant mothers come for medical care. This is where pregnant women are prepped before they give birth, here on a simple table with stirrups. And here, four women queue up for their deliveries. And this is the recovery room, complete with mosquito netting to protect against malaria. There is no electricity or incubators at Nyagasambu Clinic. Well, we kind of just decided to walk around and try to find what we need. Uh, and it ended up being, a, a, I guess, 
<laughs> good strategy. I, guess. I mean, as far as stra procurement strategy goes, that's kind of what we've been doing, and uh, we kind of hit a bunch of different electronic shops and electronic repair shops, and we found then, we yeah. found something that's going to uh, make our incubator so then, a, a lot more we'll, we'll uh, a uh, visually pleasant the, uh, and uh, you know a lot a, a little more functional than the equipment we have right now. But we're putting together a heating element for a prototype uh, a prototype incubator, which is essentially for light bulbs on four switches so you can turn one or two off if it gets too hot, four on if it's cold outside, whatever, just simple temperature regulation. And uh, neither of us are electrical engineers or have, you know, played much with uh, electrical wiring since probably sixth grade science class, but it, you know, it's a simple circuit and we're trying to make it a parallel circuit so it doesn't, you know, if one bulb goes out, they don't all go out. Ready? Ooh, try the switches. Heat. That is real hot. Yeah. One off. Two off. This is our second version of the wiring. We um, oh, refined it, made it better, uh, kind of combined yeah, sorry, some loose connections we had, and we think this oh, yeah. is a lot more safer model, and uh, it should uh, a lot less uh, points of failure. So this is our next. This is our second, I guess, uh, trial test. Of, I'm kind of scared to plug it in, but. You know, we'll see if it works. It's all a go. Everybody ready? Yeah, watch out. On the fourth day, the incubator team would learn if the Rwandan furniture makers could build a prototype of the rice incubator without the benefit of power tools. No, I tell you what, if we get more orders though, we might have to get make you a hundred or three hundred of those. Can y'all do that? Yeah. Maybe. Uh -huh. Okay, we've got to go to the Ministry of Health uh -huh. and get this approved. But if they get approved, they're gonna go in the rural hospitals and the district hospitals to keep the babies warm. So in the end it was clear that the incubator team had met one of its key objectives to bring rice engineering technology to a developing country and have that technology built locally. The first step in empowering entrepreneurs to create a self-sustaining business.